Welcome to the next part of the module on Android Concurrency Frameworks, which wraps up our discussion of the Handler class. This part explains how the Handler class enables the sending and handling of message objects via the message queue associated with the thread's looper. It also shows how handlers are applied in Android applications and its Hammer Concurrency Framework. The Handler class defines methods that enable programs to send a message to or remove a sent message from the message queue associated with a handler, as shown at this link. Unlike posting runnables, which are self-contained commands, each message contains a bundle of data that can be sent to a handler, as described at this link. This data contains a user-defined code that recipients can use to identify what the message is about, as well as several integer fields and an arbitrary object sent to the handler. This data will subsequently be processed by the handler's handle message hook method, which developers must override by extending the handler class. The handler and its thread-specific looper collaborate to dequeue each sent message and dispatch its handle message hook method in the context of the thread associated with the handler, in accordance with the message passing variant of the active object pattern, which defines service requests on components as the units of concurrency and run service requests on a component in a different thread from the client thread that requests the service, as described at this link. There are three main categories of handler methods relating to sending and handling messages. For example, there are several variants of the send message method itself, some of which are highlighted on this slide. As with POST, some send message methods add a message to the front or rear of the message queue, where they're processed as soon as the queue is ready to do so. Alternatively, a delay can be specified using relative time, which indicates how much time must elapse before the message can be handled. Finally, a delay can be specified using absolute time, which indicates when the message should be handled. The latter two methods allow programs to implement timeouts, ticks, and other timing-related behavior. There are also several methods that insert so-called empty messages, which only contain the what value, into the message queue for immediate or deferred handling. Several variants of the remove method use the what value to delete any messages that still reside on the handler's underlying message queue. A second category of handler methods create messages that are passed to send message. These obtained message methods are factories that allocate a message from the global message pool, setting various fields of the message as designated by their parameters in accordance with creational patterns described at this link. There are many obtained message methods some of which are highlighted on this slide. The third and final category of handler methods are used to dispatch and handle messages via the handle message hook method, which must be overridden to receive and process messages in queued via send message. Handler message runs in the context of the thread-specific looper associated with the handler instance in accordance with the message passing variant of the active object pattern, as discussed in upcoming videos. Posting a runnable to a handler is straightforward, since the runnable defines a self-contained command whose logic is localized in its run hook method. Sending a message to a handler is a bit more complicated, however, since the handler must be extended and its handle message hook method overridden to process messages it receives. This example shows how to use a handler to send and process messages in several threads. For example, it shows how to send a message from a background thread to the user interface thread. Likewise, it shows how to send messages at periodic time intervals from the user interface thread to itself. It also outlines how the Android handler, looper, and message queue classes collaborate to use and implement a different path through the Hammer framework than covered by the previous post example in the earlier video. This example is based on the Android countdown timer class, which schedules a countdown until a specified time in the future as described at this link. A countdown timer's on tick hook method is dispatched at regular intervals via internal calls to the send message delayed method until its countdown time period elapses. For example, the code on this slide creates a 30,000 millisecond or 30 second countdown timer 
in the user interface thread. Its onTick hook method is dispatched via an internal callback to the handle message hook method every 1,000 milliseconds, or one second, at which point the number of seconds remaining is written into a text field. When the 30 second time period elapses, the onFinish hook method is dispatched via an internal callback to the handle message hook method, at which point done is written into the text field. In this example, a background thread calls start on the countdown timer, which sends a message that triggers the processing described above. Countdown Timer is an abstract class whose onTick and onFinish hook methods must be overridden, as shown at this path name. This analysis is also fairly detailed, so you might want to download the Android source code, available at this link, and follow along. Countdown Timer's constructor stores the future time and countdown intervals in its data members. Countdown Timer also contains an internal handler that's associated with the thread's looper. This handler must override the handle message hook method to process messages passed to send message. When a countdown timer receives a message via handle message, it invokes a callback to the overridden onTick or onFinish hook methods in the thread where it was created. Its start method obtains and sends a message to its internal handler via send message. Send message inserts the message into the message queue of the handler's looper where it's processed as soon as the queue is ready, as shown at this path name. The path through the handler, message queue, and looper code is essentially the same as the path for posting and processing runnables, as shown in the previous video. The main difference is that the handler's dispatch message method invokes the overridden handle message hook method instead of the run hook method of the encapsulated runnable. Handle message runs in the context of the thread associated with the handler. When the countdown timer's handle message method is dispatched, it checks to see if the entire time period has elapsed, in which case it invokes the onFinish hook method. If the callback occurred too soon, the send message delayed method is invoked to schedule another callback at a later time. If the time interval has elapsed, the onTick hook method is invoked and the next time interval is scheduled via send message delayed. Countdown timer's hook methods all run inside a synchronized statement to ensure that calls to on tick never occur before the previous callback is complete. Countdown timer is used in Android's middleware and applications for various purposes, such as lock screens, as shown at these path names. In summary, the send message methods in the handler class form another key portion of the Android Hammer framework. In particular, they provide the means to enqueue and later handle messages sent from within a single thread to itself or passed from one thread to another. They're often used to send messages from one or more background threads to the user interface thread. The collaboration between the handler's send message methods and the message queue and looper classes implement the message passing variant of the active object pattern, as described in upcoming videos. Unlike the handler's use of runnable commands, which centralizes the processing logic at the point where the post method is invoked, the send message methods decouple client senders from handler receivers. Developers must therefore extend the handle message hook method and write explicit logic to handle the messages it receives. While there's an extra step involved in writing these handle message hook methods, this decoupled approach can be more flexible and parameterizable than the centralized model provided by Post's use of runnable commands. To showcase the message passing features of Handler, we analyzed an example of the Android Countdown Timer class, which internally sends messages to a handler that collaborates with the looper and message queue to schedule and dispatch callbacks to the onTick and onFinish hook methods in the user interface thread.